Tyler Henry, Hannah Johnson, Kent State holding a 15-14 lead over Northern Illinois. Had a chance to talk about Ray Gooden earlier, but for the Kent State Golden Flashes, they are under the instruction of first-year head coach Haley Eckerman. And we've had a chance to talk about her resume throughout the course of the year. But again, the numbers, they don't get any less impressive as the season goes on. She has rapidly risen to a head coaching position here. And you see some of the stats from her playing days, named the Player of the Year by Volleyball Magazine, All-American, National Champion at Texas. And she is trying to bring all of that expertise to this Golden Flashes team that got off to a really hot start to the season, their best non-con since the 2000s, and has kind of sputtered a little bit here in conference play. So Kent State trying to get back on the right side of things as we head into the home stretch of MAC play. Here they'll go to Tyson on the slide, and Danny puts it to the floor. Kent State reclaims the one-point lead. One thing to note, too, about Kent State's defense, it seems like the setter is almost always in system. Um, up at the front of the net, which again makes it very difficult for the other side, especially for their middle blockers, to close up on the double block. Well, and we've talked about it too. With Kent State transitioning to the 6-2, they get three options, and that does just shift your focus as a defense. You've got to worry about so many things, especially with how well Kent State runs the slide. A couple of really good blocks here at the net. Good dig there by Hafner. Kent State is going to have to give up a free ball. Let's see what Northern does with it. They'll go to Mihasevich. There it is. She goes for it herself. The former hitter turned setter. Kent State now will have a chance to set Copley. And this now is the longest run we've had this entire match. That one may have been out of play, but they went ahead and set that anyway. Kent State going to have to come up with a diving dig from Gardner. Flashes. Tee it up for Sorensen. Dug out on the other side. My goodness. A back and forth affair here as Hafner goes to Sorensen a second time. And it's just outside the end line. Northern Illinois will take the point and the momentum. And that could be a big swinger in this set. you got to give these black row players a lot of credit on this play. Yeah, they did a phenomenal job. And now it will be the former hitter, Ella Mihasevich. And it, no, I, we talked about it before, but it's still so strange to me. A former outside hitter turned into a setter. That adds a dangerous dynamic to your attack when she's playing the front row. It does, but it seems like she's very offensive still at the net, which could bring a whole different type of threat for the other team. It certainly does. Kent State, I'm sure it was in their scouting report. Matter of fact, we know it was in their scouting report. Coach Eckerman talked with us about it in our pregame chat. As the Flashes win the serve back here, and it will be Morgan Copley to send this in here for the Flashes. Neither team has gone on a run here early on as Mihasevich sets the far pin, and it's going to be blasted off a blocker. Emily Dykes comes up with another big-time kill. This is a northern squad that's got five different players with over 100 kills this season, two players over 200, and again, we've still got a plenty of volleyball left to play this year. They have been lighting it up on the offensive end. Good diving save there from Gardner right down to Tyson, but an excellent dig on the backside by the setter. Now Kent State comes up with a block, and this time the flashes will collect the point. Danny Tyson comes up big for Kent State again, and she has been called upon an awful lot in the last couple weeks. It seems like Kent State's definitely been incorporating their middles a lot more. Even though she didn't get that kill off the bat, Tyson really came up and was willing to get that point for her team. Yeah, she has been all over the place for the flashes as there's the set to the middle on the other side, and Emily Dykes will give it a go. But the point back to Kent State, who takes a two-point lead. And we've seen this an awful lot inside the Mac Center so far this season. Kent State and their opponents, it seems, have played these back-and-forth sets until the very end. And then all of a sudden, one team goes on a run. Kent State wants it to be them. Northern will call a timeout to try to stop the bleeding, and Ray Gooden wants to calm his team down a little bit after the serving ace. Gardner genuinely has a really aggressive arm back behind the line. Even with her short serves, it looked like it would be an easy serve right over the net, but it's actually very difficult to pick up, especially when those back row players are close to the end line. Yeah, it's tough, and we've seen teams struggle with that before as well. You're right, though. I mean, optically, especially from up here in our bird's eye view, it looks like a little rainbow serve, easy enough to dig out, but when that thing is almost scraping the net on the way down, that's really tough. And even if you do get a hand to it, you have to make sure you don't put it underneath or into the net. Absolutely. You almost have to play the ball backwards, back into the middle of the court, so that way you're able to set up an offense. And a lot of times teams struggle with being able to handle that short serve. So for her to get that down, it says a lot about her as a server. Take a look at some of the early numbers here in set number one. Kent State currently out hitting Northern 250 to 143, blocking and digging has been completely even, as have 
the serving aces and service heirs. Actually, Kent State with one more of each of those. So for this Northern team, I mean, again, we've talked about it. They're versatile. They have a lot of options. What do you need to do here to go on a little mini run and get yourself back in this opening set? Yeah, I think they need to get back into their groove a little bit, um, and that means getting the setter in system. So that way she's able to have her three options. And even with their setter front row as well, she's able to attack too. So back row players really emphasizing getting that ball in the net. Yep, Myhasevich has been excellent when she's been in system, but Kent State, to their credit, has done a good job of taking her out of system quite a bit in this first set. Flashes with a three-point lead, needing five to take the opener. Gardner on the serve, and now that one a little bit awkward, but they are still able to set that to the far pin. It's Gardner, though, on the dig. Kent State back to the middle. Flashes with a chance to set this. Now they go back to Sorensen. I thought that was going to drift into the net, but it's played well. Kent State's going to get another crack at it here, though. They want to go back to the freshman. Off speed, not this time. Set to the far pin for Northern. I don't know how Kent State kept that out of the floorboards. Copley with a good play from the back row. Flashes with another diving save, this time for Hafner. Sorensen, third time's a charm. Yes, it is. Kent State goes back to Mia Sorensen, and the freshman phenom delivers. Flashes lead it 21-17. The defensive efforts tonight have genuinely been very impressive. Hafner actually picked that up with one arm, sets it perfectly. That way she was able to set up Sorensen and get a really good kill off of that ball. Yeah, typically when you make a, a desperation save like that, you're going to get out of system very quickly. But Kent State, to their credit, they've made the saves, and that second touch has been so clean to set somebody up for an actual kill attempt. We've got a timeout called on the floor here, and actually they may be looking this one over as the official went over to the sideline very quickly. Point initially was given to Kent State, and again, we talk about this as well, but we've seen these swing sets and really swing matches in the Akron matchup. Kent State lost a challenge, which ultimately gave Akron a point. It was a two-point swing. The Zips ripped off a 6-0 run and then swept Kent State on their own home floor for the first time in over a decade. These challenges definitely keep the games interesting tonight. You see a play, and then a coach might see it, and it completely can switch up the score. So adds a lot of at-the-edge-of-your-seat feel a little bit when you're watching the match. And actually, not 100% sure if this is a challenge, as it doesn't look like they're reviewing anything down there at the booth. But also, it's not a timeout, because we already had both of those for Northern, and none have come off the board for Kent State. The Flashes obviously would not be calling a timeout here. So for one reason or another, an official stoppage in play. Kent State's back on the floor and ready to go. And here come the Huskies. And I'll tell you what, Northern Illinois, they desperately need to go. Again, they don't have to get it all back right here, but we talk about it all the time. You can't trade points when you're down. This has been a nice little serving run for Aaron Gardner, the Kent State senior in her fifth year with 15 aces Leads the team with 281 digs and will look to deliver the first set here for the flashes if Kent State can pick up the next few points. Good serve there. They'll try to set this to the near pin. It's blocked away by the flashes. Give half the credit to Mackenzie McGuire. Give half the credit to Lana Straycheck. And the Kent State block stands strong to put Kent State two points away. Kent State's middle blocker definitely was very disciplined on that ball, and she was able to close off that block perfectly and put up nice forehands in front of their right side hitter. Another tough serve. That one had some backspin on it. Myhasevich sets to the far pin, and it's a kill for Jablonski, who's been a little quiet here in this opening set for the team's leading kill getter. But she gives them a big one here, and now they need a serving run from their libero, Frankie Bertucci. Kent State going to get this in system. Hafner to the middle, down the line for straight check, and the flashes are on set point. This is a beautiful kill by straight check. She looks like she's coming in and going to hit that five zone on the other side. She ends up hitting that ball cross body, which, again, makes it very difficult for the defensive team to pick that up. Well, and that was a no-looker, too. She was looking the other way, completely fooled the defense, as that one is inside the line, and Kent State will wrap up the set on a serving ace from Gracie Jureski. So the teams will swap sides here, and I think they might be taking a look at this as it is the final point of the set. Both teams started to swap sides and then very quickly were called back by the referees. And I don't hate this. You want to make sure you get this call right. It was awfully close to the line, but I will say, whether it counts or not, heck of a serve by Jureski. Definitely. It does kind of kill the vibe a little bit going into the next set if, you're, if you have that challenge call, but... 
Well, the Kent State bench doesn't seem too bothered. <laughs> As the Cotton Eye Joe plays here in the Max Center, and we'll take another look at this on the replay. They decided to let it go, and I don't know, Hannah, that might have been out of bounds. I th there's a slight chance it clipped that end line. I don't know if they're going to have a better look on it, but we get that's a real close call. Yeah, we get the zoomed in look here. This is what they're taking a look at, and boy, I'll tell you what, it's even it's somehow even easier to see where the line is as it is neon pink, and we'll talk about that <laughs> later on in the broadcast, but again, you know the rule. All it needs to do is clip a portion of that line to be in. Kent State hoping that that is the case, but from that angle that I saw, I don't know. I just I get the feeling this one might be going the other way. And also, you look at it from the perspective of, you know, Northern Illinois trails it by five. You leave it up to this. Nice. Oh, the point does go to Kent State. So the flashes will take the opening set. It will come on the Jureski ace. And Kent State with a 25-18 set one victory well on their way to a home match win. We will step away, and when we come back, it's set number two between the Golden Flashes and the Huskies. Kent State takes the opener 25-18. You're watching Mid-American Conference Volleyball right here on ESPN3.